Was this emotional selling when they pour a beer on the screen? Yes. <laughs> Too bad I don't drink, but yes, very good. I'll uh, have you. Can I have yours? <laughs> okay. Uh, I'm talking to a prospect that um, he's very eager to get off the phone. Um, I had a good conversation for 15 minutes the first time, completely out of the blue. And then he said, well, yeah, I have your information, so I will call you back. So I called him back a couple of the, several days later, and he basically, the conversation gets shorter and shorter. He said, well, I have your information. I haven't made a decision yet. How can I turn him around? You have to take, you have to use, a, a, you have to be an authority. You have to put him in a lot of pain, and then you have to use scarcity. I'll put that in order. First of all, why is he selling the home? Have you asked him, well, gee, you want to go in the opposite direction? Do you really want to sell this home? You know, well, real estate's going up. Why don't you keep it for a few more years? You'll make more money. Yeah, he's actually not selling. He doesn't know what to do. I just saw the house abandoned for a long time. He's very close to my house. and he's make, He doesn't know what to do with the house. He has to make a decision. Okay, so, what, well, what kind of house is this? An investment property? He's living in it or what? No, it's a rental that has been vacant for months. Oh, okay. Well, oh, gee, Eduardo, why don't you keep the property? You know, it's a good rental in this market here. You'll, you'll get a tenant sooner or later. It's not costing you any money, right? Yeah, well, it's costing me money because it's sitting there for months. Oh, wait, wait, what do you mean it's costing you money? There's no mortgage on it, right? Uh, that I don't know, but maybe there is. Go along. It's a role play. If you can yeah. Have yeah, there is. Yeah. Oh, you're not paying taxes, insurance, uh, landscaping, security, homeowner fees, things yeah, like that. Yeah, the gardener goes there every week, at least. Oh, yeah, yeah, you got to have a gardener and everything like that. But you're, you're, you know, so what could it cost you? A couple thousand bucks a month? Big deal, right? Yeah, maybe. You must, you must be married to a lovely woman. You know how I know that? Why? Because my wife would kill me if I lost that much. If I flushed that much money down the toilet in an empty property, my wife would kill me. How do you deal with it? I think he's a widow, but that's okay. I, I, my, okay, my apologies. I, it's role playing. No, no, no. But uh, what am I doing here? Sure, no, no. I, I know you're reverting the the situation. You're showing him all the all the problems he has by not making a decision. See, if we go and argue with him, you know, say, say, look, gee, all the, we got to get that emotional thing going. Money is very, money is very, very emotional. So you've got to talk to him about that. Then you've got to say to him, gee, why are you selling it in the first place? Why? Sooner or later, you'll get a tenant, right? And everything will be fine. You'll be making money again. So you don't really want to sell it anyway, right? Yeah. Uh, uh, well, yeah, I don't, I'm, I'm 84 years old. I'm not in good health. Uh, 84, 84 is like middle age. The next 84 are going to be tough. <laughs> My, 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 my mother-in-law is almost 94. She drives a car. She works for Habitat for Humanity, and she can drink me under the table with single malt. Okay, that's, that's... These are, I use humor a lot. I use a pattern interrupts. I do anything to get you off balance because the minute you say, well, I'll think about it. Uh, I'll, I'll take your information and digest it. What is he really saying? No. He's saying no to you. And then he goes on the witness protection program, right? Yeah. Okay. So you've got one chance, maybe one chance. You've got him on the phone. You've got to push the envelope. You've got to go for it. Listen, sir, I'm very busy. I got, I'm going to be doing a deal this week. I love your home and your neighborhood. But if you don't want to do a deal, I'm not going to call you every day and bother you and uh, leave voicemails and stuff. That's, that's not the way I roll. So can we do business? Is there any way we can do business today before I leave? Well, I don't know, Claude. I really like well, would, you. I really. If you don't know, who would? Like I said, I have your information. I have to make a decision. Well, make one. Okay. Well, this is. I push for that. He said, "This is not of your business." Yes, it is. Yes, it is. You ran an ad. Here we're talking. You're asking me questions. I'm asking you questions. We're being polite to each other. I want to do business in a civilized way, but um, you know, you're. If you don't want to do business, why don't you just say no? If you can't, I'll say no. But the problem will still exist. You got an empty property. It's costing you $3,000 a month. It's been empty for four months. You're out $12,000. And I'm ready to do a deal and write a check and a contract today. What do you need for me to do business before I go? Last chance. Yeah. I don't know. I, I still have to make a decision. OK, I think, it, I think it's over, sir. What do I get that feeling? 
because I can't come clean, why, why I, I, I can't commit. You can't commit. Why can't you commit? Let's tell the truth here. Let me give you a, let me give you a shot of tequila and, a, and an injection of sodium pentothal. Tell, let's, go to the, let's go to the truth before I leave. I don't know. Uh, I don't we'll do time out here. Yeah, yeah. I'm, I'm relentless. I'm, 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 I, I'm the only sales trainer that I know of who says this pretty controversial statement that I'm going to make now. The salesperson comes first. You're the guy with the problem. I'm the doctor who has the magic vaccine. Okay. Are we going to play that? Well, I don't know, doctor. I'll have to think about it. You know, I, I'm 84. And you know. Listen, do you want to live or not? I don't have the time. I got a waiting room full of patients here. But, yeah. So is it being assertive? Is that a dirty word? Are we too? Let me ask you guys another controversial question. Oh. Um, do you think we're too nice in sales? Is assertiveness, <laughs> is being assertive na oh, nasty? Is it too uncomfortable for most of us? Yes. Yes. Is it wrong? Do you think we have rights in the sales process? Do you think when we're talking to someone and they're manipulating us, well, I'll think about it, I'll take your information when you know they're lying. Don't we have a right to say, hey, let's stop the games. Let's be adults here. Can we do business or should I get lost? When you take it away from somebody, do you think they've ever heard a prospect, a salesperson who fires the prospect? Do you think they've ever met a character like me before? <laughs> no. Okay. So I either, I, when they get off the phone, what do you want them to say about it, Eduardo? What do you want them to say about you, Eduardo? I would like them to remember me, but I don't want to upset them. Sometimes, you know what? Sometimes it's good to upset them. Then do they call anymore? Maybe not, but maybe you're not wasting your time. How many times have we called them up? We sat up, we were up till 12 o'clock writing out a contract. We kept leaving voicemails and voicemail. Let me tell you a little story here. Good Bill Tan story. Okay, I'm living in New Jersey. I'm, so, I'm talking to some people in Delaware. Delaware is, you know, five and a half, six hour drive away. And they have a property. We have a great conversation. I drive all the way down there. And we have this great conversation. We have a cup of coffee. Claude, this sounds great. We're going to give a, we're going to review this. We're going to, uh, and we'll talk next week. We'll talk on Monday or something. I said, great. I'm driving all the way back up New Jersey, another five and a half, six hours. I think I've got a deal. Guess what I, you know what I had? Huh. Nothing. I lost 12 hours of my life, baby. And then I got mad at the prospects because I couldn't get them on the phone. I left voicemail after voicemail. Two weeks later, oh, Claude, we're, you know, we're still thinking. We're not going to go ahead with, and all that other stuff. And I was mad at them. Who should I have been? My mentor said, no, there's no bad prospects. There's only shitty salesmen. Who should I, be, who should I have been mad at? Man in the mirror. Me. Yep. Why? Because he went all the way. Because I didn't get a commitment. I didn't get enough information before I drove that six hours back and forth. Yeah. You, you only get so much time to waste in life. Okay. Do you want to, do you want to go to the bank and live a life of comfort and security? Or do you want to waste time with people who want free consultations forever? So Eduardo, it's sometimes it's okay to fire the prospect. Sometimes it's okay to put Eduardo first. The salesman comes first in my world. You're doing business honestly, ethically. You're looking to solve people's problems. You're entitled to be compensated. Or should people be allowed to manipulate you and waste your God-given life? Oh. It's my viewpoint. It's, it's just the 